In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get kind of retrofit all set up and how to use retrofit with Dagger and inject it as a dependency. And I'm also gonna explain how the application is gonna work in the course regarding authentication. So on the screen, I have the app, the finished version of the app. Uh, if I click here and I enter a user ID, a number from zero to 10, can be anything, and I click login, uh, that ID is then checked with a REST API and it authenticates the user if it's a valid number. So the REST API that it's authenticating against is at JSON placeholder, uh, JSON placeholder .type, typeycode.com. It's a free REST API. If I scroll down and I go to users here, you can see that there is 10 users here and they all have an ID. If I enter an ID that exists, basically it will authenticate me. So if I log out and I try a number that doesn't exist, it'll say that that number doesn't exist. Uh, but if I try one between zero and 10, or I think it's one and 10, then it will authenticate and get that user's information. So basically we're gonna do all the kind of setup stuff required to set up all of this, this retrofit interactions and the HTTP requests and all that kind of thing. So first of all is getting the retrofit dependencies and you can get it from the retrofit website. So if you just go retrofit Android and Google, go to the square website and you can get the dependency there if you want, but I'm just going to get it from the source code for the project. So I'm going to go to the, I'm just going to check out the master branch and I go to app and I'm going to go to build.gradle and I suggest you do the same. This is going to be the easiest way to get the dependencies. And I just got to find the retrofit one. There it is right there. So I'm copying all that. So I'm also copying the JSON converter. I'm copying the retrofit dependency and also the JSON converter. I'm going to go into our project, go down to the build.gradle file. We got lots of files open here. Scrolling down to the bottom, I'm going to paste that in and sync it. And now we have everything we need to start making HTTP requests in the project. So I'm expecting all of you who, wa who are watching this course to already be familiar with Retrofit and how to set it up. So I'm going to be kind of going through this process really quickly. So the first step, as you know, if you are familiar with Retrofit, is creating a base URL. So I'm going to create another package named util. And then inside util, I'm going to create a class named constants. And inside constants, I'm going to put our base URL. So public static final string, I'll call it base URL. And that's going to be equal to the JSON placeholder URL. So if I bring up the browser and I go back to the JSON placeholder website, this is the base URL right there. So I'm copying that and I'm pasting that in there. All of the requests that we do in the, in the uh, course, in the application, we'll be using that base URL. Next, I'm going to be declaring the retrofit dependency inside of the app module. I'm going to be putting it inside the app module because this retrofit instance is going to exist for the entire lifetime of the application. It's, uh, it's going to have multiple APIs, but that retrofit object is going to be used throughout the application. So I want it to sit here and exist for the entire application. So the first step is declaring it as singleton. Next is app provides then static, it's gonna be a retrofit object that we're returning. I'll do provide retrofit. Actually better go provide retrofit instance. Uh, then we do, do return new retrofit dot builder. And the builder's first parameter will be the base URL, which we can get from our constants file. So constants dot base URL. Next is the converter factory, so add converter factory. This is going to be the JSON converter factory. So dot create and then dot build. And that's going to provide our retrofit instance to the entire application. Next, if you're familiar with retrofit is building an interface that holds the methods for accessing the API. And at first glance, at first thought, the first thought that comes to your mind, you might think about putting that in the app module. But actually, if you take a look at our diagram, we want to keep everything as separated as possible. Our app component will only contain dependencies that we need for the entire application. And then we have other components, subcomponents, that will contain dependencies that are kind of unique to those subcomponents. So the, the authentication methods, like the getter methods for authenticating, they only, they only really are needed inside the auth component. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create it uh, inside of a subcomponent as a subcomponent dependency. And that's, uh, that's one of the cool things about Dagger. That's one of the things you wanna utilize when you use Dagger. So first I have to actually create that method. So I'm gonna create a new package, go and I'm gonna call it uh, network. Inside network, first I'm gonna create a class, whoops, 
I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call it placeholder. All this is is a placeholder, exactly what it sounds like. This class is not going to be used for anything other than just helping me keep the packages organized. So I'm right clicking on the network package again. I'm going to create another new package. This is going to be called auth. So now I have an auth package inside the network package. Now inside this auth package, I'm going to create a new class. And this one is going to uh, be called auth API. And it's going to be an interface. Now inside here is where I'm going to put the getter method for the retrofit request for authenticating. So I'm annotating it with at get. I'm returning a, just a retrofit call object. It's going to be a general response. Uh, we we still got to like design the response and do all that stuff. But just for now, I'm going to add kind of a dummy method in here. Later, we're going to come back and I'm going to design the uh, the response object, basically. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I mean, like this response, we need to design that. If you know retrofit, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just going to call this, you know, get fake stuff, just a dummy method for now. So now, like I said, I want to only add this auth API inside of the auth subcomponent. So what I'm going to do is come into the auth package inside the dependency injection package. I'm going to right click, go to new Java class, and I'm going to create a class named auth module. So this is where we're going to add, this is going to be another module. This is going to be where we're going to add all the dependencies for the auth subcomponent. So that's going to be this, this subcomponent right here. You can see in the diagram I have auth module and auth view models module, which, uh, which we both have now. We have auth view models module and we have auth module. Now the only thing that I want to put in here, I'm going to do at provides and I want to provide that auth API. So auth API uh, provide auth API and I just want to it needs to accept a retrofit object so retrofit retrofit then I want to return retrofit dot create auth API dot class and remember I can access this retrofit instance inside of this auth module because this auth module is a sub it's a module that's inside of a subcomponent so I'm going to add this right here auth module dot class so this module now exists inside of the auth activity subcomponent and the auth activity subcomponent is a subcomponent of the app component and inside the app component is the retrofit instance so it can kind of go right down the line and access that instance don't worry, I'm going to go over that one more time because I know you're probably a little confused. So just kind of referring back to the diagram, we have our app component. Inside the app component, we have the retrofit instance. The auth component is a subcomponent of the app component. Therefore, it has access to all of the dependencies inside the app component. One of those is the retrofit instance. So I'm going to close all these just so you can kind of get an overall picture. Uh, so I'm opening up the app component, the activity builders module, first of all. So the app component is the parent. It, the um, auth component is a, is a subcomponent of the auth component because of the way that we've set this up. And inside of the auth component, we have the auth module, which is in here. Or sorry, the auth module right here. And it has access to the retrofit instance because it's a subcomponent. Um, you might have to kind of run through that again, but it's it's pretty straightforward, honestly, because you have it's a, it's a pretty straight line down the line where the dependencies kind of feed into and uh, we can get access to that auth API. So now anyway, we have this auth API and we can access it inside of the view model. So if I go into the UI package and I go into the auth package, go into the auth view model, I can now inject that API into the constructor. So I can do auth API, auth API. I can declare one here. So private final auth API, auth API. And then inside the constructor, I can assign it. So this dot auth API equals auth API. And just to check, I could say um, if this dot auth API equals null, auth API is null. If not, auth API is not null. And then we can check and we can make sure that the auth API is actually being injected as a dependency. All right, so let's uh, let's run it and see if our dependency injection is working. All right, so the app is running. I'm gonna open up the log cat here and we can see view model is working. Auth API is not null. So we have successfully created our retrofit instance. We've leveraged it and used it 
inside of our auth module and we've injected a, another dependency into the view model successfully. So now at this point, we're ready to kind of move forward and design that retrofit response object so that we can move forward with the authentication.